just heard all about the Hispanic Heritage Month celebrations, and now we're going to get a cooking lesson from Art Day's Cocina Cops, Detective Sergeant Al Vasquez, Police Officer Diego Quintero, and Lieutenant Luis, Luis Casanova. Welcome, guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> nice thank to you. have you all here. And you brought a lot of veggies and fresh vegetables here. What are we making exactly? We're making a, uh, a stew. It's called sancocho in, in, uh, in Spanish. And it basically consists of a lot of vegetables and proteins. We got beef, we got pork, some beef ribs. Um, we got some uh, vegetables over here. This is called a yautia. A what? A yautia. Okay. Which is basically in the potato family. All it right. grows a lot in, trop in tropic, and it's actually very uh, better than a regular potato in terms of vitamins and stuff like that. And this is a traditional meal? Yes, it is. Yep. Basically, it's a traditional Latin soup. Uh, every, every Latin country does have different uh, versions of it. For instance, t today we combine in the three different type of meats uh, in terms of pork, beef. Um, it it kind of gives it a unique taste to it, the flavor okay. comes out of the different types of vegetables um, using uh, it's just a very tasty type uh, stew. All right. And, uh, you know, here to share with everybody. Well, else. let's get started get then. Try. I want to learn how to make this. All right, so typically you're going to put some olive oil on the bottom of the pan. Okay. And you're going to braise the meat. Um, obviously, for the sake of TV, we kind of, kind of, do, kind of do this um, the wrong way. But typically, you would brown your meat. You throw it in here. And it seems like it would serve a lot of people. Oh, it is. It right? is. It's, a, it's a very large serving, absolutely. We're feeding the whole police department here? Uh, well, almost. <laughs> now, we'll take some adobo. We'll put it on top of uh, the meat. Coat it real nice. I think adobo is used in almost uh, all of these. It's a staple in our cuisine. Right? <laughs> it's a standard for everything, too. All right, grab the adobo. <laughs> it's Got definitely it. a staple in our cuisine. So you would let that meat brown, typically. Okay. Once it's browned, would you go ahead and introduce your, your did vegetables? Did you do all that chopping? Yes, I did. Now, what's the difference between a banana and a plantain? It, it's, well, I guess it's, it's different taste, to be quite honest with you. But they look the right? The plantain is more starchy. Yeah. Um, and banana is, is sweet, obviously, but it comes from the same family. All right. All right. Sounds good. So you would you would yeah. peel uh, typically this this uh, pot here two green plantains, two yellow uh, plantains, the sweet ones. Um, you have about a cup and a half, two cups of the yaltia, um, pumpkin, about another cup of pumpkin. Oh. Uh, and you would just simply once your once your meat is browned, um, you would add. You throw it right in. Throw huh? Right in there. Yeah. Just the, just the mixture, and uh, you know again this is what we're using. Every household might... You could alternate with different ingredients. Yeah, absolutely. Alternate. You might want to take one thing that you might not like, and it's still going to take somewhat the same. It's just this this particular ingredient that we use, and it's, it's our choice. Got it. Now, Lieutenant Casanova on the end there, What? Um, how are you guys involved with Arte? Um, I'm on uh, Arte's board, um, and we directly, all three of us, get involved in their annual events throughout the year. Um, they're college trips where they take uh, inner city kids and expose them to the to the college uh, culture mm -hmm. um, which in most cases uh, well not in most cases in some cases some of these kids will not have that opportunity to be exposed to college life so we, we help them with those types of types of things I see okay <coughs> back to the cooking we have all the ingredients in one pot which seems pretty simple yes very simple at this point you would add some sofrito which is basically cilantro culantro uh, onions garlic little salt a little cumin um, you put it in your blender, and this is the consistency that you end up with. Almost like a pesto, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Almost like a pesto, yep. And you would add this a uh, couple of big sp uh, spoonfuls uh, uh, in, in your pot. Um, you would add some uh, cumin, some adobo. We already added adobo, some sazon, salt, and then, of course, the sofrito would go in your pot. Um, you stir it, all, stir it all up, and you introduce your water to it. You're looking for about maybe maybe a half a pop more of water to cover the vegetables. Okay. And then you just let it stew. That's it. How That's long it. is it stewing for? You're going to stew for about a good hour, an hour, you hour to stir minutes. it, I'm assuming? Yes. Once in a while, you go in there, you stir Occasionally it. Occasionally, you do stir a little and uh, make, make sure it's not sticking to the bottom. And, you know, keep, keep checking keep an to an see eye if on, there's right? any tenderness, you know. What take, is it? That, and then how do you serve it once well, it's all done? Basically, you can serve it on, on a bowl. As I said before, you can do it just as a meal of itself. It's a very hearty soup. Or, or stew, um, or you could serve it with rice. We have rice uh, to serve with it um, on the side, or some people even put it in in the soup. No, do you cook in the police department for everyone? No, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> he will. He's going he to will. today. He's going to today. He's making a lot of Yes. All right. 
terrific. <coughs> this sounds great. And what would you serve for dessert? What's a typical uh, Latino dessert? A flan would be nice. It's like a custard, Spanish custard. All right, very good. So and the tres leches is also yeah, uh, tres goes with the dessert. And we have a uh, cocktail that goes very well with this. It, you, it can go as a cocktail or dessert. Either or. You can drink your dessert. <laughs> How does it work? Let's get started uh, with this. I'm going to make a, a, a lutini. Okay. The lutini consists because of... Because you're Lou. Because I'm Lou. <laughs> so we titled it after me. How fitting. <laughs> a lutini consists of a small amount of orange juice. Is this an original recipe? It's an original recipe made by Lou Casanova. Yes, he's it old. truly is. He's old. <laughs> 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 Well, really? Really? One, of key, one of the key ingredients is parcha juice. Parcha juice is a passion fruit. Okay. And I, I put a tad bit of this in there. Two servings of this. Um, and if you want to put a little bit of a bang to it, you put Puerto, sure. Puerto Rican liquor. Puerto Rican uh, Bacardi, rather. You put two of these in there. Depending on no. taste, right? Absolutely. Depending on taste, correct. Depending on the mood, yeah. And... <laughs> You top it off with a splash of grenadine. Sweeten it up a little. Sweeten it up a little bit. Put this aside. That sounds. All right, and you mix that, and of you course, irrigate you, can, it. you can find the recipe on WTNH.com. You guys going to stay to the end of the show, and we're going to want to give it a taste. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, very good. Uh, coming up next, singer songwriter Chris Castle performs when Connecticut Style returns. That looks terrific. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Money doesn't talk, it whispers. Twisted words and double speak. I'm strung along by the song and the dark.